Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to my comparison between the brand new iMac Pro and the 2017 5K iMac. Now, I've had this machine for just over a week now, and I've been testing it and benchmarking it like crazy. In my previous video, I talked about different benchmarks, my opinion on the machine, thermals and cooling, specs, pricing, all sorts of stuff. But along with that, I took a really deep look into uh, Final Cut. So if you're interested in my opinions on this machine and all those different regards, definitely go and check out that video after you guys watch this one. This one I want to keep it shorter, so I'm going to focus on video editing performance with regular H.264 and H.265 footage, Red Raw and Canon Raw to see how these two machines perform. And this video is specifically for those who want to buy either a 5K iMac or an iMac Pro and want to see if it's worth spending the extra money on this new beast of a machine. Now along with that, if you already have a 5K iMac, is it worth upgrading? How much performance difference are we seeing? I have links to both of these machines in the video description below. I also have a video where I talk about what specifications or which add-ons you should get if you're going to spend the money on one of these machines and I'll have a link to that there as well. So let's get right into it. Starting off stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip, the iMac is roughly 15% faster. Now I usually mention that neither of these programs make good use of your computer's resources. So if we take a look, the iMac Pro only use about 10% of its CPU and no GPU power at all and the regular iMac took 25% of the CPU. And this is gonna be a trend you guys are gonna be seeing as we go along in this video. If you look at Final Cut, the regular iMac does this task in seven and a half seconds compared to uh, four minutes and six seconds uh, or two minutes and 11 seconds. So that's a huge difference. And the reason is the regular iMac with Final Cut maxes out the CPU and basically maxes out the GPU and gets it done so quickly. So I'd really like to see Adobe and DaVinci Resolve improve in this way, but like you guys saw, DaVinci Resolve is quite a bit quicker already compared to Premiere. The next test is a 5 minute 1080p project from the A7S II with two LUTs and film grain applied. The iMac Pro was roughly 35% faster in Premiere Pro and just about 10-12% faster in DaVinci Resolve. Now looking at the same exact project, same exact footage, but this is a 4K version of it, uh, we have once again a roughly 35% faster with the iMac Pro. But with DaVinci Resolve, we're actually slightly slower, which is very interesting. Uh, and I looked at the CPU and GPU usage. Uh, the CPU was only being used roughly 25% on the iMac Pro with DaVinci Resolve versus 70% with the regular iMac. So the software isn't utilizing the hardware well enough. This could mean that we're going to get some speed improvements in the future, but DaVinci Resolve was just recently updated, so I don't expect to be have it fixed anytime soon. But but like you guys see between the two programs, DaVinci Resolve is once again much faster than Premiere. Now onto the toughest test. This is four 4K files scaled into a 4K timeline, two of those being reversed, each one with two LUTs and film grain applied. So it's only a 20 second timeline, but it's very difficult uh, to do this operation. Um, so we have over twice as fast with the iMac in Premiere Pro. Some very good uh, results there. But in DaVinci Resolve, it does do the task much, much faster but the iMac Pro is actually slightly slower. And once again, it's because the resources, the hardware isn't being utilized to its full potential or not even close. Now let's take a look at some Red Raw editing. Here I'm going to split off Premiere Pro from DaVinci Resolve. We're going to look at the results separately and starting off with some 4.5K from the Red Raven. So just the timeline smoothness, um, the iMac Pro is able to edit and play everything back at full res with like LUTs and corrections uh, with almost no drop frame. So it's very smooth at a 100% resolution. Whereas a regular iMac, even at one quarter playback resolution, uh, it was still dropping frames once you had some corrections on that footage. And one quarter of 4K doesn't look that great when you're scaling that back and taking a look. It's usable, you can edit, but it definitely is a huge difference here. Now, if we take that file and we render it out, uh, we have about four times faster with the iMac Pro. So a huge difference in times, and this is gonna kind of scale with the raw footage. Taking a look at 8K, 24 frames per second footage, the iMac Pro can play back at half resolution with a LUT or one other correction on there without dropping frames. So this is really impressive. So you're playing back at like 6K equivalent, higher than 4K, which you really don't need on a display 
play this size because the preview window is just really small. But if you have an external 4K monitor connected, you're going to still get really nice crisp footage that you can cut without any issues. You'll see exactly what's in focus and it handles it really well. Now, if you add on multiple corrections, multiple LUTs, and you start layering those effects, you want to drop it down to one quarter resolution, which still looks just as good because that is 4K preview window, a quarter of 8K. Uh, so no issues there and it's playing it back without dropping frames. On the regular iMac, on the other hand, we have one eighth resolution. So if you want to play that back, you have to drop it down all the way to 1 8th. And it looks really bad. I would not want to be editing raw footage uh, at 1 8th resolution. Now, taking a 5-minute uh, 8K with some uh, LUTs and some effects on there, some corrections, uh, the iMac Pro was three times faster. So we have 42 minutes compared to over two hours. So uh, once again, a huge difference in performance. Now let's take a look at Red Raw and DaVinci Resolve. Unfortunately, I don't have the studio version, so uh, this is Red Raw in a 4K timeline and exporting in 4K as well. So with the 4.5K footage from the Red Raven, the iMac Pro can play it back at one quarter of the debayer setting with effects uh, and it playing back smoothly, whereas on the regular iMac, we're at one eighth debayer and it doesn't look that great at 1 8th. Rendering out a five minute version with two LUTs and film grain on there, the iMac Pro is 50% faster. Taking a look at 8K, the iMac Pro can play back at one half de Bayer if you just have like one LUT or one correction. Other than that, if you're stacking different effects and corrections, you're gonna be looking at one quarter, which still looks great, and that's probably where you should be at anyways. Um, the regular iMac can play back at one quarter de Bayer if you have no effects, no corrections, but you're in DaVinci Resolve, so obviously you're gonna be color grading and at that point, we have to drop down to 1 8th, which isn't really a great experience. As far as rendering, the iMac Pro is 25% faster. And if you look at these numbers compared to Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you'll notice they're much faster. But keep in mind, this is a 4K timeline with a 4K render or export compared to those other programs where I had it in an 8K timeline with an 8K export. So we're seeing some good improvements here. But if you have the full studio version and you're editing in actually 8K, I'm sure there's going to be more of a difference. Now let's take a look at Canon Cinema Raw Lite from the C200. This is 4K at 60 frames per second footage, and we're just looking at DaVinci Resolve because unlike uh, Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro does not yet support these files. The iMac Pro is 45% faster with a five minute project with two LUTs and film grain applied. And as far as the actual editing experience, uh, the iMac Pro can play back at full resolution with some effects added with very minimal dropped frames. It seems like this codec isn't as efficient or the software isn't as efficient yet compared to Red Raw, but it's definitely editable at full resolution with effects and color grading the footage compared to the regular iMac where even without any sort of effects or corrections, we're already dropping frames and getting some stuttery playback with that 4K 60. Now, if you're shooting 4K 30 or 4K 24, it's going to be better, uh, but this was at 4K 60. Lastly, let's take a look at some H.265 or HEVC files in Premiere Pro. Since my version of DaVinci Resolve doesn't support them, we did see some good differences here. Starting off with just the timeline playback, these are 4K files, they're 8-bit from the NX1, and with two LUTs and film grain applied, the iMac Pro was able to play them back at full resolution, and we had some good headroom in the CPU and GPU, just in case we wanted to do multi-cam or we wanted to add in extra titles and other effects, whereas the iMac regular one, we had had to drop it down to one half resolution and the CPU and GPU is basically being pushed really, really hard. It was kind of maxing it out. So we really would need to drop it down to one quarter, which is still usable. I think um, the playback viewer isn't as great as at one half. We do see some resolution loss, uh, but it's doable, but we see way more headroom with the iMac Pro and it's handling it a lot better. And we have some good differences in the exports as well with about 45% faster speeds if you're going to H.264 as your export. Now, if you're exporting to H.265, which I would expect if you're editing H.265, you'd probably be exporting or rendering in that setting as well. We see almost 70% faster speeds with the iMac Pro. So in conclusion, is the iMac Pro worth it over the regular iMac? So to start off, if you're in this boat and you're trying to decide between the two machines or you're trying to decide if you should upgrade, you're already choosing to buy a Mac instead of a Windows PC. Obviously, I have a lot of great build videos on my channel for Windows PCs. They're a really great value, but we're gonna go from the scenario of should you buy an iMac or an iMac Pro? Now, along with that, you can also buy the full configuration from Apple set up exactly like the iMac Pro. So one terabyte of SSD and 32 
32 gigabytes of RAM. In that case, you're only paying $1,300 more for the iMac Pro. And along with that, you're getting 10 gigabit ethernet, which is at least 200 bucks for the adapter for the standard iMac. You're getting double the Thunderbolt 3 ports, which if you have the adapter, you're using one of them already. So you have a lot better connectivity and you're getting some other improvements as well, as far as a lot better cooling and quieter operation. So not counting that, just looking at performance, if you're editing with Premiere Pro, I saw a good improvement throughout everything. H.265, uh, H.264 editing, raw editing, there's a huge difference with raw, and I think it's definitely worth that extra $1,300. Now in DaVinci Resolve, if you're just working with H.264 footage, it really doesn't seem to be worth it. Uh, the performance isn't very different. And in fact, a lot of times um, the actual regular iMac was faster. Uh, but if you're doing some higher end stuff, the HEVC I would suspect to be doing uh, much better on the iMac Pro since the graphics cards that are in there, the newer generation of AMD graphics cards do a much better job at decoding that footage. And of course, if you're editing with RAW, we see a huge difference and that $1,300 is way worth it spending it and upgrading it on an iMac Pro. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you were considering both, what did you end up going with? If you have any other suggestions or questions, definitely ask, I'll do my best to answer them. Once again, I have links to both of these machines in the video description below, and I will continue to compare the iMac Pro to a couple other systems, hopefully a Mac Pro, the trash can one, if I can get my hands on it, as well as a Windows PC, my latest best bang for the buck video editing PC and we'll really see how much of a difference we get if you're interested and if you're okay with getting a Windows computer as an alternative. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next one.